What's up Scramblers? So today we're going to kick off uh, our prep series of videos talking about chain lube. Right, so the things that you'll need for this video are going to be uh, some sort of brush you can use to clean your chain, um, just a little like ice cream container with some fluid in it. The stuff I use to clean my chain is actually kerosene. Uh, but you can also use like stale fuel or just fuel if you want to uh, throw money in the bin at the moment, considering the price of fuel. Money, 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 money. And then the next thing is some sort of chain lube. And I'll explain that a little bit further uh, later when I'm going through lubing the chain of what sort of lube that I use for off-road because it differs between on-road and off-road because off-road is like an oil base uh, and then on-road sort of chain lube, I think it's like a silicon base. So that is designed to stay in your chain longer, but it'll pick up heaps of dirt when you go off-road, which you don't want to do because then that's chewing through all your sprockets and that sort of stuff and wearing away at those. So I'd recommend using a nice uh, oil-based chain lube, uh, which is usually marked as like off-road. You can see, hopefully my camera focuses. Yeah, there. So something like that, that's what I use. Now, I have a hoist and I have access to a paddock stand. Those things make it really easy and like a 30 second job. I like throw the bike on, lock the front wheel in, and then just lift up the rear with a paddock stand. That's super easy for me. Might be a little more difficult for you at home if you don't have those sorts of things. You can still lube your chain if you have none of those things, but it's just not gonna be easy. So you're gonna have to basically roll your bike backwards and forwards so that you can get at every single link on that chain. So yeah, you might hit that entire section and this entire section and then roll your bike backwards for like a meter and then hit the rest of it. And that is really tedious and it's gonna take a lot longer. So I'd recommend investing in some of those things at a minimum, just a paddock stand so that you can put it on stuff like these little bobbins, lift your wheel off the ground in 10 seconds flat and then just do what you need to do and get it done. So without any further ado, let's get stuck into actually cleaning the chain. Okay, so all you gotta do Get this little bad boy, soak it in some of that kerosene or whatever you're gonna clean it with. I put the container underneath so it's catching all the drips. You can see that's probably dripping stuff everywhere. And then just going through cleaning your chain. You can actually get these super handy chain cleaning brushes um, online for like, I think we got this one for like $12 Australian and you know, it's probably even cheaper in the States. Also give it a bit of a um, clean top and bottom as well so that you're actually getting in there and um, cleaning in between the links where the links move. And then once that's done, I just give it a bit of a wipe with a cloth, just a rag or something. And basically run it. One thing to be really careful of when you do this is actually not getting your finger in between here and your sprocket, or here and your front sprocket's probably a lot harder, but just, man, I crunched my finger. We were running a, a maintenance workshop and I crunched my finger in between the sprocket because you'll notice this chain is on the right hand side and I was showing someone on the left hand side and I actually pulled my own finger into the sprocket and felt a crunch and I was like, felt like my finger had just been smashed into a thousand pieces and I ended up losing the fingernail. So not recommended. Uh, and then also some people think they're being smart and really good by 
um, turning the bike on, having it in gear and the wheel just spinning and then like holding stuff. The thing that I learned off a lot of mechanics who had fingers like this uh, was that that was a bad idea. So definitely don't do that. Once you've done that, what you wanna do is then just go through and lubricate your chain. And you'll notice the lube that I'm using has a little bit of a greenish tinge to it. So when I notice that the links have got like a bit of a greenish tinge, I know that it's all covered. Next one, the final sort of thing that you wanna do is to go through and actually look at your chain and you know, like check the links. Now you don't have to do this every single time, but I'd recommend doing it uh, once every six months or so, just to make sure you don't have any seized links in your chain because that can cause excess wear on your sprockets and that is not a cheap fix. So I'd recommend just maintain your chain. It's the one thing that, you know, is just gonna get you through day in, day out for 10 years straight if you take care of it. So definitely do that. All right, so last but definitely not least when you're checking your chain is tension. So you wanna make sure that there's not too much slack there. So that you're getting like chain slap when you rip the throttle. So the way that you check that is make sure that the wheel's actually on the ground and then you wanna check this tension and make sure it's not traveling too much. And that, that's actually probably an example of not enough tension. So what I'm gonna do is quickly run you through how to retension it. The tools that you're gonna to need to be able to do that, I use a 27 millimeter socket and just a pretty big um, breaker bar so that I can get enough tension. And then what you wanna do is you wanna be pushing, come at it from this side and you wanna be pushing downwards so that you can use the weight of your body to really get that extra purchase and get a bit more um, get a bit more power to be able to turn that because this nut is actually under quite a, quite a bit of torque because you want it tight, otherwise your wheel might fall off. And that would be a bad day. So I get it just a little bit loose. You don't need to do it all the way. Just enough that I've got play in there. So this little thing here, and I'll just zoom in so you can actually see what I'm talking about. This sucker here is your chain tensioner. There's also little dots in here that show you how, um, how far back your axle is. The reason they've got that is so that you can actually compare it with your other side over here so that your wheel's straight. Otherwise, you can find that your wheel will get pulled off center and that's also bad because it's kind of you're going to find the bike pulls to one side because the wheel's trying to push it in a certain direction um, so what you want to do to be able to avoid that is just when you tension it i usually take the tension off this nut and then i use that and i wind that outwards and then i'll do the same on the other side until you get your chain tight enough that it's not um you're not getting all that play because um, too much play can be bad, I know. I love to have a bit of fun on the scrambler and play, but too much play is not great. So the lock nut is a 13 mil spanner. And that one, the actual tensioner head is a 12 mil spanner. So 13 mil here, 12 mil here. So, I'm gonna start by just undoing this because this is a lock nut. So we're just gonna take that off a little bit. I usually give it a mil so because it what it does is allows me to kind of measure how much I'm moving it. And what you want to do is undo that. Yeah, that's better. So 
Now that I've adjusted this side, what I'm gonna try and do is go, okay, I look really close in here at, uh, at this dot, just in here, and see how it's just touching the fourth dot. So what I'm gonna do is then go around here and try and get that for the same spot on here. So it's a bit dirty there, but you'll notice that it's a bit of a ways off that dot. So what I'm gonna do is just make it match on the other side, and then that's it. That's literally chain tension 101. The only other thing you've gotta do is just make sure that these little uh, lock nuts are tightened up uh, at the end. Once they're all done, you're just gonna tighten that back up and put the bike back down, double check that your ta chain's got tension and then you're done. And that pretty much wraps up today's lesson. Next week, I don't know what I'm gonna cover. So you're gonna have to just find out when the video comes out. So if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that. It helps me out a bunch, but also it'll notify you when I release my next video so you can get some more free knowledge. Thanks and uh, catch you around.